51 in my life. Testing one, two, three. All right. Isaiah chapter 51. Isaiah chapter 51. All right, so. This sermon will be a little different as well. I'm going to tell you all mostly a story. Isaiah chapter 51, and then we'll read verse 14. The prophet Isaiah, he is preaching God's judgment upon the children of Israel, but he also preaches on the restoration of their nation and their people. The children of Israel going into captivity and exile under the Babylonians have been under sufferings, oppression, and imprisonment as if that they are in a black hole that they cannot get out. And in this black hole, they want to be delivered. And the prophet Isaiah gives that metaphorical expression in his preaching at Isaiah 51, verse 14. The captive exile hasteneth that he may be loosed, and that he should not die in the pit, nor that his bread should fail. That's how the Jews felt, as if they are stuck in that hole and that they can never get out, and they want to be delivered, they want to be freed from captivity, but the Lord just puts them through that misery, through that captivity, and they want to be free. They want to eat again, they want to live again, and they want to live prosperously again, that their bread should not fail. They don't want to die in the pit. And quite often we might feel like that we feel that way with our own Christian walk as if we are stuck in a black hole. I don't know how many of you felt that way. Perhaps the last couple of weeks you felt that way. You felt like you were in a black hole that you cannot get out. And in this black hole, it's a dark pit. And this dark pit is so void and then it, it feels like that in the very inner depths of your soul that there's a black hole inside and a void that cannot be filled and that is called depression. That is called fear. It's called emptiness. It's called anger. It's called the blame game. It's called complaining. It's called bitterness. But whatever it is, you are stuck in that black hole. And it's like that you don't want to be stuck in there. You want to get out. You want to break free, but how can I break free from this inner black hole that's so deep inside my soul and it feels like it's hurting? Well, long, long time ago, you always start a story that way, right? There was a person who had a beautiful land, plot of land to live in. Beautiful garden, beautiful house, beautiful terrain. It had like a brook. It had some hills, birds uh, singing sweetly out on the treetops, and then the moon and the stars you could see so clearly. The man lived in a very beautiful property, but then there was a deep, dark hole that was in the middle of his property. One time he fell inside that nasty dark hole and then he got stuck in there and he tried everything he could to get out, but he just could not get out. In the worst of his predicament and in his situation, he saw a long branch stinking out or a twig or a root that stuck on the side of the pit. So then there was this old tree that had roots that digged in so deep, and because of that, it was able to stick out, and he was able to see something to grab on and to pull himself up out of the black, dark hole. Now, in this story, I would like to talk about of this specific character is you. You are that person in that dark, deep hole, and you got a branch or a twig or something to cling on to to get out. But here's the interesting part of the story. Normally, the, you would think when you read that story that the guy would grab the branch or grab the roots and pull himself out of that deep, dark hole so that he can get out of there, get out of that void, get out of that darkness. 
But instead, the person did not grab on the branch or the root. Instead, the person, sadly, just was stuck over there, sitting on his bum, crying and whining, I am stuck in this black hole and I cannot get out. When there was a branch or a root for him to get out all that time, why would not that character grab that root and vine? I see that as us today. You are right now that character in the story who is stuck in that deep, dark hole, and there is a branch or a twig or a vine on the side of that dark hole for you to grab on and climb, but you just won't do it. You keep saying you want to get out of the dark hole. You keep saying that you hate this place. You keep saying you want to get out of this rut, but you just won't. I wonder why. Let's study this individual of this story a little more today. The title of my message today is Escape from the Black Hole. Let's pray. Father God, please fill within me the power of your Holy Spirit. Cleanse my sins away with your precious and most holy blood. Help me to preach what you want me to preach. Let it be a blessing to the hearers and change our lives. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, usually when you're stuck in a black hole, what's the first thing we do? Well, we feel the pain. That's the normal thing. When we go through pain, it's natural emotions come out. Anger comes out, you're going to vent out. Sometimes you can even blame the other party. Sometimes uh, the emotions come out so strongly that you imagine scary things. You always think of the worst case scenario, which is a strange thing. But the body naturally reacts that way. Sometimes what you would do is you would cry. Um, you would hold your chest. Sometimes your ha heart is pounding too hard and you breathe so deep that it's hard to breathe. And then the first thing in your mind is, why God? And then you would pray to the Lord because it's, you're supposed to pray. And as a Christian, you're supposed to pray. And then you give out your cry to the Lord. You tell him your grief. You tell him your sorrow. But then that's the hard part. The hard part is not to pray. That's the easy part because you're in pain. The, some of you, it's hard, which is strange. But it should be the easy part. The easy part is praying about it, pouring out the bitterness of your soul to the Lord, as the psalmist said. But then the hard part is after you pray. That's the hard part. The hard part is you gave your prayer to the Lord. Now what do you do? It's not like you can jump for joy and say, Woohoo, God's going to answer my prayer. Not with that pain that's running your body and your mind and your heart. <coughs> In those situations, what do you do? That individual who is in that dark hole, he's stuck. He doesn't know what to do. He probably gave out a few prayers to the Lord, a cry out for help. And then how the Lord provided the answer was that twig or that vine on the side. Here, I want you to cling on to this. Grab onto it and pull yourself out. But that person who is stuck in the black hole, sadly, might do this. He might just be sulking and groaning and not... And when he looks at that root, he says, that's just too fragile. I don't think it's going to hold me at my weight. I think it's going to snap. You know, it looks uh, rugged. It looks rough. If I hold on to that twig or that root... I'm going to scratch my skin. I'm going to probably even put cuts on my skin. And man, it's a long climb up. I don't think that I could do that. I don't want to do it. And then what you do after that, or that poor individual in that black hole is just sitting on his dup and just crying and whining. And it's like, there's got to be a better way. There's got to be another way out. Why isn't there another good thing that can come out and help and rescue my life over here? Why won't somebody come out, uh, hear my cry, and rescue me out of this black hole? And that's, unfortunately, some of us today. Some of you who are that person in that black hole. And then God gives you that root or that vine for you to pull yourself out, but you're the person that says, that's too rough to grab onto. There's got to be an easier way than this. 
Oh, I know that branch is in plain sight. I know, Lord, that you gave me a plain thing to cling on to. That's Bible reading. That's prayer. That's going to church. That's him singing, rejoicing in the Lord, being thankful for good things. And I know that, Lord, but that's too rough. Lord, that's a long climb. And it's too difficult, Lord. I cannot cling on to that. I cannot grab that. I cannot pull myself out. There's got to be another way. There's got to be a better way. Why can't there be a better way? And you're that poor soul that's still stuck in the black hole. And that's your problem. Your problem is, you know why you're not out of your black hole? Of bitterness, depression, misery, sadness, fear, and worry? Your problem is, you think there's a better way around it. You're not going by the same old, same old that the Lord has given to you, and that's called faith. No one likes that route. Who likes the route of faith? Just believe, remember His promises of His Word, just keep praying, be patient, Cling on to God, that branch, that tree, and keep on climbing, just keep climbing. No one likes that. No one likes that. But that's your only way out of that black hole. What are you going to do about it? See, that's your problem. Your problem is you don't think that's the only way out. You think that there are better things out there. There's another thing out there. Now, here's something that I don't want to encourage, but it does work, all right? And the Lord does do this, okay? If you're in that black hole and you want to get out, but then what the Lord has given you, that twig or that root is not getting you out, getting you out there, then you get yourself out. But it's sinful. What about if it's worldly? Then you go do that. Now, I'm talking carefully here. I don't want to encourage people to sin or do something worldly, but this is what the Lord does to finally open our eyes. And to get us to learn our lesson. What the Lord does is that he's not a Calvinist that forces you to get right. A lot of times he'll be merciful, gracious to chastise you, to try to get you in the right path. But he's not going to turn against your free will. He'll let you sin if you want to sin. You know that? He don't stop every murder out there, folks. He don't stop every theft that goes on in the world. He doesn't stop every person who cusses out on God and curses him. He doesn't stop you from complaining, getting bitter at him. Lord, don't do that. Lord leaves you be. Why? Because sometimes it teaches us a lesson when we finally think that, well, there's got to be something better out there than you do it. And then when you do it, then you realize when you're looking in that black hole, trying to find some easier, higher ground to find, that there is no higher ground. And then you're like, it's just this root. It's just this branch. You know, that's your problem. It's easy to blame the environment. It's easy to blame a person or God but then what you're going to realize is this, is that you can blame God all you want, blame the people all you want, blame your environment all you want. What's good that going to do? You're still stuck in that hole. You think blaming is going to automatically, here's higher ground for you, go on up. It doesn't matter. Look, if you want to blame somebody, go ahead, blame somebody. If you want to blame God, go blame God. If you want to go out and drink and get drunk, go ahead and do that. If you want to go out and sin, go ahead and do that. If you want to go by the world's options of giving you an easier route, go ahead and do that. Because God will let you. Why? Because then you'll finally learn and teach. You'll be taught. You might say, well, the worldly option is the answer. Oh yeah, God will give it to you. But you know what God said in his word? And you know what that book says is that there is pleasure in sin for a season. And then you keep drinking, buddy, and then see if uh, that alcohol is the answer to your problem. You keep going to your worldly friends and then rely on them to get you out of a jam. Let's see how long that will last. When's the last time when you graduated from college or from high school? You're my best friend forever. Yeah, we're friends. And then where are they now? 
Now you got friends in church. We're your friends. I know you don't like me. I don't like you. But guess what? I'm your friend. You're my friend. You know? Amen. What happened to your high school buddy, huh? The one that, best friends for life. Yeah. We did drugs together. We did all kinds of cool stuff together. Where are they? Huh? What happened to your lover, huh? Your previous boyfriend, girlfriend? Huh? Oh, yeah. I want to go with the partner I want to go out with. Where are they now? Huh? Where are they now, fella? See what happens when you go to the world to sin? God will let you do it. And you will get that temporary pleasure like you're that immature high schooler in that temporary moment, but then later on you know that don't last forever. Go ahead, drop God. Just drop God. Drop Christianity. Go ahead and live it out. And I promise you, a thousand percent, you're not going to find the answer. Amen. Right, brother. You might as well learn that now rather than years later. Amen. If there's something you don't want to do is learn that years later, 10 years later, 20 years later, but you already made so much damage already that you affected your next generation now. And now you're playing catch up, but then it's too late. You already messed up your next generation. Am I getting somewhere here? See, that's your, the problem with you human nature if you think that there's a better answer out there and you want and you're stuck in that rut you're stuck in that black hole you go out and find it then go out go ahead skip church for years don't come back you can get mad at me as the pastor you can go ahead walk out mad but that ain't gonna get you out of that black hole drugs drinking fornication the world prosperity fame Good job, money ain't going to get you out of that black hole. And if you think so, go ahead. Look, look, I'm, I'm just sick and tired. The Lord is sick and tired of constantly preaching at you, trying to convince you of what's the better way and what's the right way. What more can we do? We're not going to force you. So look, you got a free choice. Go ahead. We're not going to warn you anymore. We're not going to talk to you anymore. Just go out and do your thing then. What's holding you back? You know why I can talk like that? Because I've been through that. You think I'm a spiritual person, right? No, I'm flesh like you. So when I think about that, then what happens all of a sudden when I'm thinking about dropping God? When I'm thinking about going out my way? Then this is what happens. I don't know if it happens to you, but it happens to me. That when, in those moments where I'm thinking, okay, I drop God. I'm going to do what I want to get out of this black hole. You know what happens? Then suddenly, my common sense starts kicking in, not my emotions. Yep. Yep. That emotions run wild with fear, worry, bitterness, complaint, anger, and all that. So then God's like, okay, Gene, then what do you want to do? Look, you have free will. Don't we all have free will, amen? We all have free will. So God's like, I ain't stopping you. If you want to sin now, I ain't going to stop you. If you want to do something worldly now, I ain't going to stop you. If you were going to do what you want to do, go ahead. I ain't stopping you. So I'm like, uh, and then God's like, what's stopping you? Then my common sense starts to kick in. Then I start to realize, well, I thought that I could do this, but then I realized I can't do the, those things. Why? Because sometimes you don't have enough money to do those things. Sometimes you have your uh, family who watches you, maybe. Or maybe because uh, your flesh is so lazy to even do the sin. Then uh, some of these things that I thought would make me happy if I only did those sinful, fleshly, worldly things, it turned out that th those were just fantasies in my mind all that time. They were just fantasies, like, oh, I wish I could do this, and why don't I do it then? Yeah, that's good, brother. That's good. Go ahead, do it. What's holding you back, man? Yeah. Nothing's holding you back from walking out of the church service. If you don't like today's preaching, go ahead, walk out. Why? Preaching, go ahead, you have freedom. No volunteers? <laughs> See? Common sense is kicking in now. Yeah. Common sense is kicking. I don't want to embarrass myself. 
or there's a certain scenario or factor that's preventing you from doing it. That's the point. Then you realize, then reality starts to kick in. And those fantastical dreams you had about, if I did this thing, I'd be happy, that thing, I'd be happy, you realize when reality kicked in, oh, I can't even do them. That's one. Second thing is this. Second thing is, if it is, if it is possible that you could do some of those things that make you happy, I'll tell you what's going to happen. Like I told you before, there's only pleasure in those things for a season. And then you learn the hard way. And then you realize this thing don't really help out after all. It was just a temporary band-aid. And then you're going to eat dirt, and your next generation is going to eat dirt. And you can't uh, repair for lost damage. Here's another thing that happens. What happens is fear kicks my heart now. That's mostly the reason why we don't do stupid things in life, is because of fear. We're thinking about uh, how, would, uh, how would I look in front of my family, right? How would I look in front of my church, right? If you're a parent, even more so. This really happens to you when you become a parent. How do I look like in front of my kids? People start to mature once they start to have children. Then when that kicks in, Fear kicks in. Well, I, I could have done this, I could do that, and I can do this, and I did. Then why don't you do it? You know why you don't? You're afraid. You're afraid. When free will kicks in and God says, okay, go ahead and do it, then there's some amount of fear in there. And then you realize, oh, I can't actually do it after all. Maybe it's a fear, which is a good fear to have is God's word, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe you know that. Because, man, I know that book is true, and what the Lord says is true, so I ain't going to even take chances on that. Well, that's a good fear to have. Amen. See, then you realize right there that when God gives you, okay, go ahead, have the freedom to do the sin, go ahead, do the worldly thing, do what you want to do. But then you know, even if the Lord lets me do this, sin has a price to pay. Yeah. The world's going to bite back at me, and I'm afraid to do that. And then what happens then, when you're stuck in that dark hole, here you are, see, you're in that dark hole, oh, I want to get out, I ate everything, and then there's got to be higher ground, higher ground out here. And then there's that branch and that twig, that vine, and you're like, oh, you know, there's got to be a better way, better way, and then God says, okay, find a better way in that dark hole. Go ahead, look. And then you're like, oh, that's, that's right. I didn't think about that before. Oh, I just had fantastical thoughts that there was a higher ground and there's, 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 and God's like, there's what? And then you go, nothing. Then you're looking at that branch, right? And you're going, All right, I'll go to church. Go to church. Yeah. All right, all right. And then after a few sermons or a few fellowship moments and a few songs, and you're like, I'm happy now. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy. Yeah, I'm happy. I'm, yeah, why, why didn't you do that earlier? Exactly, that's the bottom line is flesh. Here's one of the most powerful things that you're going to realize when you're stuck in that dark hole. You ready? You have full freedom, you know that? Even in psychology, it's so interesting. Um, existential psychology even taught this, that um, psychology, they always blame about, you know, your biological roots or the environment for, you know, your current issues, right? So I've studied all that, but it's so interesting that in the end, psychologists realize this, is that nothing is set in sto stone to control your life. You have the final choice. You have the freedom to make the difference. Existential psychotherapy is most effective on that. What they do is this, is that when you are in a state of crisis, at a moment like, in a trapped moment, like, okay, what am I going to do now? When that mind starts thinking about, okay, what am I going to do about this problem? 
That's what's called an existential moment or a freedom moment. You realize that I can start using my head to figure out an answer and find an answer myself. I can make the difference myself. Do you think like that? No matter how bad your life is, here's one thing I've learned, all right? And this is even in a secular viewpoint in psychology. No matter how bad or messed up your life is, you got to realize this. You still have freedom called choice. You know how you became what you are today? You know why you are coming in with the clothes you're wearing today? Why you're here in church today? Why we have a warm area over here? Uh, what made you drive all the way here? It's called choice. Every choice and decision you made leads you to what you are now, you have to understand. If you want to make money, become rich and prosperous, you don't just become like that. What happens is there are certain decisions a person made, right? To make a difference. I'm going to work hard. I'm going to create this kind of better environment so that I can earn more money. Or I'm going to play politics or impress my boss or et cetera, et cetera, right? When a person, you got to realize you have choices that are, even though the environment is bad and then your heritage, your background is bad, you still have so many unlimited number of choices to make. You have the choice to be sad or happy. You have the choice to find answers to make things better. You have the freedom and the choice to make this black hole a little better room or something like that. The point is you have freedom. You're not doomed to a black hole. You know, uh, I, I, uh, I recall that I lived a very sad life. Even sometimes in the ministry, it was very hard. I kind of understood what Adoniram Judson and some missionaries felt about loneliness and in the field. And over here is a hard place, right? And then I was going through every temptation as a young adult would go through. But I had to discipline myself. And that's very hard. So uh, I felt uh, trapped and I felt miserable. But it wasn't until the Lord opened my eyes recently that, hey, Gene, you have the freedom to make the decision. You can't blame your church people. You can't blame your family. You can't blame everything else. You're the one that decided what the church members wanted, what your family wanted, what the environment wanted. You never chose what you actually wanted. And that was my eye-opener. And then I realized, wow, I never did actually what I really wanted to do. And then God's like, okay, what do you want to do? So here I am, right? What do I want to do? I can keep fantasizing about some higher ground out there and, it's never and I'm never going to find it. So then God's like, okay, so here's a branch and twig. What do you want to do? Then I realize there's nothing I want to do. I don't want to stay here. And there's no higher ground or other option I can go to. One thing I want, Lord, is to get out of this black hole. And God's like, then why don't you do that? And I'm like, okay. And then I got it. And then I beat myself. I disciplined. I worked hard. And then I kept climbing and climbing. And guess what? I've learned, under, I now understood what it's like to be happy in a bad environment, in a bad family situation, in a bad background, in a bad body and health. I've learned what it means to be happy. And what it means that I can do what I wanted to do. Well, I'm not doing what I really want to do. Then you do it. And then what happens? You go back. You realize there's nothing out there. So I realize that nothing can take control of my life, no matter what bad things happen in life. Nothing. I have the choice. I have the power. God gave it to me. Something bad happens to our church, what do I do? I brush it off, man, and move on. Something bad happens in the home, what do I do? I brush it off and move on. What happens when there's something uh, wrong going on in our city, in our county? I brush them off, let them all go to hell, and I move on. 
All right, if they want to uh, jump in a f lake of fire, let them jump. I'm going to move on and concentrate my life, my family, my church people, my happiness. I'm too busy to do that. Now, I'm not saying let people die and burn in hell. No, we're soul winning. But my point is, is my point is, I don't lock and trap myself with this bad environment, this bad situation in life. I get myself out of there. Let those environment, bad situations continue whatever they want to do. Let the black hole stay there. If that black hole wants to stay there, let it stay there. But I'm getting out of there. You expect someone to come in and cover the black hole and get you out. No. That black hole exists and it's there. Guess what? This is one thing you can do. You can get out of there. That's good preaching, brother. Then when I look at that branch and that root, well, I got, there's no choice but to climb this thing. I want to climb. I want to get out of there. And God's like, well, about time. Okay, come on, climb. So then... When I start to climb, then I realize, wow, and with this hurt and this bitterness and pain that's all over in my body, I realize when I start to climb a little more, a little more, there's nothing to blame out there. Then I realize I can't, uh, that I can't blame the environment, I can't blame so-and-so, I can't blame this and that. It's all me. I had the power to grab the vine and to climb up all this time. I just never did it. So it's a lame thing to blame, uh, you know, the people around me or the environment or my working conditions or my church situation or my health situation. It's, I start to realize more and more, that's a lame excuse. And then I realize those excuses don't mean anything if I grabbed that vine and climbed out to begin with. You know, uh, those things, yeah, the environment is to be blamed, people around you to be blamed, your health to be blamed. You can do that, all right? That's true, and those excuses are legitimate if you never grab that vine to begin with. But when you grab that vine and you climb up out of that black hole, you realize those things are just, th those aren't legitimate excuses at all. They don't have any bearing. They have no relationship. They have no meaning if I'm already getting out of the hole. See, you haven't grabbed that twig, that vine. You're not climbing out of there. Then you'll realize that the past that you blame, that it's in the past. And it's a hole that's over there in the past. Just leave it there. I just move on. Remember one preacher said, just keep walking. Then I realized that while I'm climbing out of that dark hole that, wow, there's nothing to blame. There's nothing to get upset at. Just me, man. Just, I had the choice all this time. I just, wow. So then I just keep climbing out. Then I real, there's that trapped moment. That's what happens. Then there's a trapped moment. Back then, when you were bitter and hurt, you thought there were so many options. That's your problem. See that? You thought there were so many options and better options out there. But then once you hit reality, when your free choice kicks in on what you want to do, and that is getting out of that black hole, you start to understand that. You accept that. That is my freedom. That is what I truly want. I just want to get out of this black hole. And then you grab that vine and then you get out of that black hole. Then you come to a point where you realize there was no other option to begin with to get out of this black hole. It was just this vine. That's what happens. You know what creates envy, creates covetousness and jealousy? When you feel like there's so many options out there you could get. That's why you're never thankful for what you have. That's why people are discontent. Hollywood stars don't find true meaning in happiness. Why? They just feel like there's so many options they can get out there. You know what? Uh, you know how you become content? Contentment is staying, right? Where the happiness stays. How do you do that? You make sure it stays. You don't let it go off 
freely thinking like there's so many options out there, then it'll never stop that desire. Yeah. The book of Ecclesiastes mentioned about that the desire of man is empty. It's endless. That trapped situation will make you accept reality. There is no other thing that can get me out of this black hole. Absolutely none, except this vine. There is none. Did you hear what I just said? I think some of you need to hear this again. Are you stuck in a black hole right now? You feel so deep? You need to hear this. No way out, except that one vine. Yes, it's just one. One. What are you going to do about it? Once you start climbing on that vine, oh yeah, it's not like, oh, it's, it's not comfortable and I have to climb up out. But then as you keep going on and on and on outside of that black hole, then you start to realize as you get closer and closer out of that black hole, wow, it just, I never really wanted to get out of this black hole to begin with, I realize. You might say, why is that? Because if you truly wanted to get out of that black hole, you would not have hesitated or complained or halted. You would have immediately grabbed that vine and just got yourself out. You know what the problem is? Is that when God gives you prayer and God gives you his word and God gives you his people, and not only that, he's even given you earthly, carnal, physical things, okay? When he's given you these things, your problem is, is that, no, I'm not going to grab that branch and get out to get happy. I just want to stay stuck in this dark hole and be sad. You never really wanted to get out of that black hole because if you did, you would have immediately embraced church, prayer, Bible reading, fellowship with brethren, and instead of thinking about, oh, it's tough, or all these excuses, it's a long drive. No, if you really want to get out of this black hole, you would say, I don't care, get me out of here. Hey! Amen, brother. That's the thing, is that in that black hole, you never really want to get out. How much do you want to escape, escape that dark void called depression, called emptiness, called pain, called bitterness? How badly do you want to get out of there? How badly do you want to get out of there? You then start to realize as you climb on that only rope that only vine out of there, do you start to realize, if I really wanted to get out of here, I would have done this a long time ago. Then reality starts to set in, and then you realize, why was I such a fool just staying there and crying, whining, and just being miserable and depressed, and then thinking about suicide, and how, why was I so stupid? You don't start to think that until you start climbing, friends until you start to grab the rope and get out. Then in the middle of the climb, you start to realize that. If you're clinging on to that vine and then you keep pulling yourself out, you know what happens? You start to trust and rely and depend on that vine when you get out of that dark hole. Because you realize this is my, you've already accepted this is your only way out. Because you already accepted that twig, that root, as your only way out, and you've been so used to holding on to it while you're climbing out, what happened? You became dependent on it now. You became so dependent, it's natural to trust it. So then, as you get out of that dark hole, you see a steep moment, or you see a couple rocks falling out of the cliff, or you see the... Uh, the bottom getting further and further away. What happens to you more? What happens to you more? You cling closer onto that vine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you depend on it even more. You're not thinking about, oh, it's so hard, I let go. No, not when you made this far. You're like, there's no other choice but to just keep walking. Hey! I have no choice. I have to just keep walking. Amen. Amen. So you just keep walking. You drag yourself to church. Yes. 
you push yourself to read your Bible and pray, and then, and then you just sing the hymns, and then you fellowship with the brethren, you keep looking at the good things that the Lord has given to you and start thanking Him, and, and when bad things happen again, you, what do you do? You just let it go to God, and you go, oh, God, I, I just trust you, all right? New problem that comes out again, you go, oh, oh God, it's a new problem. I just trust you, Lord, because what else can I do? That's right, what else can you do? About time you woke up and realized, nothing. Do you truly, honestly believe only God is your answer? That literally without God, you would die. You never realized that until you started climbing the rope until you realize there is no other option out there, then you became completely dependent on God, which you're supposed to do. Then you com have complete faith in God, like you're supposed to do. You only had faith in Him whenever He uh, gave a handout to you. That's your problem, when things got nice. Now, that's weak faith. Complete faith is there is absolutely nothing out there that I can turn to except this guy. And I got to cling on to it even tighter. You know what should, should happen when suffering happens? Your church attendance shouldn't decrease. It should actually increase. Isn't it strange that we decrease it more? When bad things happen, church attendance decreases more. No, it should be the opposite. It should increase more. So then you just keep trusting God. Trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Then once you get out of that black hole, all right, there's your depression, bitterness. You buried it, like you made sure it's far behind you. When the guy got out of the black hole, he gets to see his beautiful garden again. He gets to see his beautiful home again. He gets to see the beautiful stars outside at night and the sun setting on the hills. While he's looking at that, he's going to go, okay, I'm going to stay away from this black hole. I don't want to fall into it again. I'm going to stay right here beside this brook and enjoy a good time. Enjoy my home. Enjoy the stars out here. I'm just going to avoid that black hole like it's a plague. I'm going to put warning signs in front of it so that I, don't, uh, so that I can warn myself, don't go even near that thing. Now, you know what your problem is? Your problem is, is that uh, all your, uh, that character, that person, if he started doing, oh, that black hole's still there. Oh, I wish somehow we'd get rid of that black hole, you know. It's still over there, though. Here I am trying to enjoy my garden and then my beautiful home and the trees and all this that covers acres and acres of land. But that black hole that covers a couple feet over there, that really bugs the life out of me. That don't make sense. If he had too much good things to enjoy in his property, why not just leave that black hole alone and just stay away from there? Yeah. And that's your problem. Your problem is, is that when God gets you out of that black hole, you've got too many beautiful things in life to enjoy. You got your babbling brook. You got your birds to sing. You got the stars that shine to look outside. Beautiful home to live in. You've got your own earthly pleasures in life, things to enjoy. But instead of enjoying all those things, you know what you do? You just keep looking at that black hole and says, it's still there. It's still there. Oh, I'm, I know I'm going to fall into that thing again. And when I fall in there, I'm going to hit the bottom and get depressed, miserable again. No, just stay away from there. Just stay away from there and enjoy what you have. And when that black hole just comes out at you, you just put warning signs so that you can see it. Hey, here comes depression. Here comes bitterness. Stay away. Stay away. Put a red sign over it because you're too dumb to see it. Make it so red. And then put it in front of your door and say, stay away. Some of you need to do that when you wake up in the morning. Okay, you know what's going to happen. You're going to complain. You're going to get angry. You're going to get bitter. Good advice. Stupid, stay away. Cover it underneath the red blood of Jesus Christ, huh? And let Jesus Christ just cover that sin, huh? Stay away from that. But see, you keep looking at that black hole, and then if you keep looking at that black hole, guess what? You're going to get closer to that black hole. 
You're going to study it a bit more and say, oh, wow, it's deep. I'm going to, I just know I'm going to fall in. I know it. Oh, that is so deep. I'm going to fall in. See, I just fell in. Just stay away from that hole. Enjoy what you currently have. Amen. That's your problem. You're not enjoying your babbling brook. You're not enjoying your property, the flowers in your garden. Enjoy what you have and just let that black hole stay there and just leave it alone. Then what happens? If you start enjoying, if that man, he's got a beautiful property with acres of land, beautiful home, beautiful garden and everything, if he's going to concentrate on enjoying what he has, what happens? He becomes genuinely thankful. Yeah. And he goes, man, I don't know other homes who have such a beautiful garden like this. Man, I'm lucky. I'm one of the few people who won this property, whereas other people, they don't live as much of a nice property. And this home is beautiful. I never want to move out of here. And what happens is genuine thanksgiving comes out. And that's your problem. You're not genuinely thankful because you never enjoyed what you have to begin with. When you genuinely, when you enjoy what you have, Thanksgiving comes out, you say, wow, you know, no, no matter about the black holes within my family or within my job or within my church or within my health, I'm very, very thankful. You concentrate on the good. Do you know how we enjoy a good blowout? It's very easy. You don't look at the bad. Amen. If you just look at the bad, no one enjoys a good blowout. Yeah, yeah. You just look at the good, then automatically you think, this is a great blowout. Yeah, then you yeah. start to go, man, I'm so thankful we have one. Because so many other Bible-believing churches don't have it. We do in the Bay Area. Wow, I am so grateful, Lord. Then you, you get super happy. You feel like you won the lottery. That's how, you, that's, that's how you get happy. You don't do that. Look at the things you got that other people don't have. That's your problem. Look at the lucky you. Lucky you that have something that other people don't have. I promise you this. Every single one of you have something better than I have. And I promise you this. I have something better than every one of you have. You know what you're... You know what my point is? My point is we're just not thankful for what we do have. Everything that we have is unique from each other. When you start doing that, you're more thankful for what you have. Your home, your family, your property, your things, your life. Yes. Be, don't just be thankful. Be genuinely thankful. Like, are you really happy to enjoy a hot lunch and that food that you're eating? If you're genuinely thankful, especially when other people don't have a hot meal like you and a filling meal like you and a good meal like you, and you got enough money to pay for it, I'd eat every, every ounce of it if I were you, lick up that plate clean and enjoy it to the fullest so that I can feel happy and satisfied when lunch is over. But no, if you're that little child saying, oh, I don't like these green little peas over there, then of course you're not going to be happy. That's your problem. What happens is when you're genuinely thankful for the good things you have, you know what happens? You then automatically become genuinely thankful for the bad things you don't have. So then, you know what happened to that black hole? Because you're enjoying your property, you're like, man, thankfully there aren't three more of those black holes in my property. Man, it's a good thing that's just that one thing to avoid so that I can enjoy the rest of my property here. Man, I'm actually very lucky. I know of other people who have a couple more black holes than I do. And I just got one or just very few. Man, I'm, man, I'm very fortunate. I'm so thankful for what I have. And then you be, what happens? You're that happy guy. And this is the ending of the story. The guy lived happily ever after, fishing on the brook, catching fish, enjoying nature, staying away from the black hole, and he kept fishing for life and lived happily ever after. The end. I hope your happy ending will be similar. Do you really want to get out of your black hole? The Bible says, 
The captive exile hasteneth that he may be loosed, and that he should not die in the pit, nor that his bread should fail. Is that you today? Or will you die in your pit? Every head bow and every eye shut. The altar call is open. I don't know what your black hole is. Do you really want to get out of that black hole? I, no, I hate my misery. I hate my life. And it's so sad and depressing and hard and bitter. Then get out of there. Do you really want to get out of there? Get out of there. You have the freedom. You have the choice. No one's making you. No matter how bad the environment or how bad your life is, nothing is holding you back from your free choice. Listen, you even have the free choice to stay in that black hole. You know that? You have the free choice to complain. You have the free choice to be bitter. You have the free choice to do whatever you want. But what good are those things, like I told you, right? Go ahead and do what you want if you think there are so many options out there. You're going to soon realize, once you start doing it, there's nothing except this vine. This is the only way out if I want to get out of this black hole. And you have the freedom to grab that vine anytime, any moment. In this altar call, God has given you the freedom to grab that vine anytime, any moment, any place. And no black hole is going to weigh you and keep you down even. You can get your foot out of there. Just keep walking one foot at a time, huh? Keep reaching out that branch one at a time. Just keep walking. Just keep walking. What happens? Then you become dependent on that vine. You've trusted God because there's no other way but, but this vine. It's the only way out. So I have no choice but to have faith in God, faith in this vine. <laughs> I got to just keep on pulling myself up. Just keep going. And you know what? Just stay away from that black hole. You got your babbling brook. You got your singing birds. You got your beautiful trees, your lovely garden, wonderful home. Why not enjoy every moment of that? There's something in this wicked, sinful world, there are still many beautiful things in life to enjoy and that you have that other people don't have. If I were you, I'd enjoy every moment of that because those things don't even last forever. A person who was discontent with children once they become old and they realize the value of children. Once a person who becomes discontent with this church when they get out of the ministry, they've yearned for the people to feed. You become discontent with that book and his word. And what happens like Jeremiah, when you give that up, there's a fire burning and you go, I long for your word once more. Enjoy what you have currently. And be genuinely, don't just force Thanksgiving, like see something that you have in life that you are genuinely thankful for. When you do that, you treasure it more. And when you treasure it more, you start to realize the fewer bad things you've got. And you're going to be thankful for those fewer bad things that you've got. God, my Father, I pray that some of us have escaped our black holes. It's such a horrible hole, Lord. I some of us just want to get out of there. We want to be free, Lord. We want to be free, free from this wretched, dark, miserable hole. I pray that we found our freedom today by clinging on to that branch and that root and getting ourselves out of there and to enjoy the beautiful creation that you have given to us. Help us to find joy in the midst of a cruel, wicked world in front of a black hole. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.